one's quirky. Hi. Um, thank you for coming today. Uh, we have a very nice collaboration. We have our speakers here from Oasis Senior Living Advisors. Uh, we have Bill Cleary and Shannon Delaney. Um, and they're going to be talking about senior living options. Um, and we also wanted to introduce Justin McDermott back there from Touching Hearts at Home. And he um, kindly sponsored the refreshments today. So he's going to stick around, too, and answer any questions for you. And I will now hand it over to Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Um, and thanks to the WAPO COA for sponsoring this event for us. OK, so I'm going to talk about senior living options and if you have a plan in place, moving doesn't have to be that scary at all if you move to a senior community. No, you're not. Focus on the positives. This is the move you or your loved one needs for a better quality of life, leaving behind the yard work, home maintenance, cooking, cleaning. Adventure is waiting, just you, <coughs> you just need to take the first step. Um, and it is very important to focus on the positives when you're doing this because it can be very overwhelming. Hire an elder care attorney and with, um, because he can go over your trust, your will, health care proxy. How many people have a health care proxy in the room? Okay, just about everybody. Uh, power of attorney. This is really important because I just worked with a woman who was from out of state and she, had, she has dementia. She's had it for eight years. She was, her husband was a um, doctor. Um, they couldn't get in touch with the husband daughter sent the police in he was dead they were in bed for two days um, and the daughter had a hard time moving him back up to Massachusetts moving the mom back up here because she didn't have the power of attorney and she needed to go to memory care and so they have to do what they were supposed to do a guardianship which would take three months but they got an attorney to do a POA um, keep imp important documents safe know where they are so when you need them you can access them or your kids can access them with that, I'd also recommend, and I do have an attorney's card on the table um, back there by the refreshments, also hire a financial planner, because a financial planner can help you, you know, figure out if you do sell a house, how long will that keep you in a senior community, and where to move your money, and so forth. And then I would say hire a realtor. Find out the value of your home, so this will tell you what your home will be worth when you do sell it, and what you can afford, because senior living is very expensive. The woman that I just told you that I moved up here, she's in memory care in Needham, 16400 a month. Hire a move coordinator. Um, Shannon can speak a little to this, too, because they're really great helps. So I work with Marie LeBlanc. She's been around for years and years. But she will literally take your home, ask you what's important to, your, to you, measure out using a floor plan for wherever you're moving and move everything down to the toothbrushes in the toothbrush holder everything your clothes are hung in the closets um and she's not the cheapest model of moving but honestly it really does organize everything and she'll set up um cable donations. and she'll set up donations if you want to donate she'll clean out your whole house if that's what you want um, donate things, get rid of things, put things in storage. Like she's very organized, and I do find that it's helpful. It's already hard, hard enough to move. Then you know, as we get older, it's not easy on our bodies, and then just the emotional side of it. So she really takes a lot of that burden off of the person moving. And as it says here, you know, be realistic. Don't try to pack sort fifty years of memories in one day. No, it's going to take a while. Realize this when you know. If you hire somebody like this move coordinator, they'll start out very slow with you. It could be half an hour a day, because it will be very overwhelming. Packing, sorting, start small. If going through belongings feels overwhelming, it's okay to start small. Commit to twenty minutes a day, and once you get going, it'll be hard to stop. Set deadlines. This will hold you and your family members accountable, and you're going to have to set deadlines because usually you sign a lease and you have to be in by that day, or they'll just have you pay the rent for that month, which is kind of silly. Um, and then this is an important one. Ask the children to collect their things. This will eliminate you from having to go through their belongings and make the decision for them. And I just moved several years ago, and we went through four dumpsters. Because, like, you know, like my daughter had college books. And she graduated from college, you know, 20 years ago. So it's like, just dump it. <laughs> No, nobody does one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, affordability. 
This is where um, it gets. So independent living stats at about 5,000 per month. Assisted living stats about 6,500 per month. And that goes up based on your care level. So before you can move into an assisted living community, you have to have an assessment. And then that's when they'll find out what is your level of care. Um, you know, some care can be an additional $5,000 per month onto the rent. And then, like I say, memory care starts at 9000 but up in the Newton area, Needham, it's close to sixteen now. But you mean the 5000 is, is an addition to the rent? Yep. Yeah. Oh. If your care needs are. If your care needs are high, yeah. Does, does military, if someone's a veteran of the armed forces, does that pay for some of it? It would pay, it, yes, it does. Um, again, it's based on your income level, and if you're a surviving spouse, it's 1400 a month they'll pay. If you are the veteran, I think it's twenty two hundred a month. And I think yep. It went up, this went up to twenty four hundred. Okay. Yeah. There's criteria about when you serve as well. Like Vietnam's it, the most confusing because you you had to serve one day in this period. In an active war. war. In an active war, so it's. And what if you didn't serve in the active war? You don't, you don't get the get benefit. benefit. Even if you were in the reserves and you were involved, no, you, that, that you will, will not get the yeah. benefit. And if you divorce the veteran, you don't get the benefit. Right. This is important. You know, what area do I want to live in? The closer to major cities, more expensive. As I said, Newton and Needham area is very expensive. Type of community, buy-in or monthly lease. So New Pond Village in Walpole is a buy-in. You buy a condo from anywhere from like 450 to 550 I think they're running now. Um, and then you still pay a monthly fee. And that monthly fee, I think at New Pond, is about $3,500 for a person, a single person. Then there's always, same with the monthly lease, there's always a second person fee. So that's my <laughs> um, And then there's the monthly lease, which is more per month. So a monthly lease, um, it's not going to be as low as the buy-in. So it's going to be, as I said, like 5000 6500 Again, depending on your care needs. Location. You get, the buy you get part of the money back. Then. Oh yeah, that's a good point for the for the buy-in buy up to ninety. It, they differ. It's always a good question to ask because each community does differ. But they do keep like the ten percent. So there's a new community going up in Brookline. It's called Newbury. The residents of Newbury at Brookline, um, and that community um, is brand new. It's going to be absolutely beautiful, but their community fee for independent is sixty thousand dollars. And that's it. You lose that. You don't get that back. This is just a, a reminder. So <clears throat> when you do move, sort your medications um, and transfer prescriptions. It's really important because she didn't help me with the woman that moved from New Hampshire. She didn't do any of her prescriptions. It was a mess. It was, a, it was hard. So, admit, so medication she needed, heart medication, you know, eye drops, things like Painkillers mostly. Yeah, <laughs> Plus, she had to go see the specialist, too. It's because she needed pain medications. Right. All right, this is what Shannon was referring to with the move coordinator. Always when you go to community, ask them for the floor plans. They will give you the exact measurements. So that way you know, will your couch fit? You know, do you bring a dining room table? You know, it's, this is where it gets really hard for people. Well, they, they're moving from a big house yeah. to probably 700 square feet. <laughs> and they're like, you know, I want my dining room table. I'm like, well... Yeah, where are you going to put it? Yeah, no, we had a couple from Wayland. They insisted on the king size bed. It took up the whole bedroom. They couldn't even fit two bedside tables next to it. And he's like, no, we like the king size bed. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you don't need one. <laughs> and then another important thing is uh, update your address, forward meal. You know, it's very important. Don't forget to forward the meal because people do forget this. And then again, they panic. And then don't be afraid to ask for help. Enlist as much assistance as you need from family and friends. I mean, it's not, 
you know, crime to ask people to help you, you know, sort through your stuff, help you pack. And then make it fun. Have fun. Enjoy your new community. Because these communities, I mean, again, when you move to one of these communities, like, for instance, if you move to independent living, you still get one meal a day, like New Pond Village. You get housekeeping once a week. You get all their activities. You get the van to your doctor's appointments. So they're really all-inclusive. I mean, you really don't have to ask or want for anything. Right. No, it's... Yeah, it is. It's yeah, like New Pine Village. It's one meal a day. You can you can pay extra, you know, if you want. Going back to college, right? Well, New Pine Village they have full kitchens. If it's tru yeah. truly an independent community, you get a full kitchen. Like some places will tell you that they're that they're independent, but if you have a kitchenette, it really was designed for assisted yeah. living. I'm way outside of my comfort zone right now. <laughs> I, the microphone has done me in. Okay, I am gonna speak about Medicare, your insurances. So what Medicare covers, what managed care covers, and then lastly, what, how, who and how you apply for MassHealth. And there probably is a SHINE coordinator here, I'm assuming. Um, I really specialize in nursing homes. I know everyone's gonna look at me and go, oh God, I don't wanna ever see you. And that's what everyone would always say, but sometimes we're, in a, we're stuck in a predicament where we need the nursing home, unfortunately. So, the private pay for a nursing home now is 17000 Yes, yep. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. It's roughly five. It's roughly five hundred dollars a day. That's on the low end. That's about fifteen thousand. Depends on where you go. Um, you know, a lot has happened since uh, since COVID. There were a lot of nursing homes. What's what's one fear about a nursing home? Give me shout some, shout, shout something out. It's going to close. It's going to close. Uh, that's a possibility. Yep. The care. The, the care. care. For me, for me, it's it would be in, in a three or four bedroom. Like I do not want to be in a room with four people. So during COVID, the the state of Massachusetts did try to pass a, a law, a regulation, I should say, about um, we called them debedding um, these nursing homes. So the three bedrooms would all become two bedrooms. The four bedrooms would all become two bedrooms. So because of the COVID yes. virus, they were worried about the, the six foot uh, perimeters with the, uh, the viral process. Um, they failed, Massachusetts failed. So they, the, the, what they decided to do was turn around and say, nursing home, we're going to fine you daily. Okay, so a lot of nursing homes debedded, took the beds out of service, et cetera. However, the fine is $15 a day. So it's worth it for them to put the beds back in service. So that's, so though the days of the semi-private rooms are gone, unfortunately, and we've now lost about 3,000 beds in the state of Massachusetts, two nursing home closures, so good call on that. So long-term care is very hard to come by these days. What does your Medicare benefit cover? Medicare is a federally funded program. We all get it when we're 65-ish. They're trying to change that, but for right now, um, it's an 80-20 plan. So you need a supplemental insurance, whether that's Blue Cross Medex, AARP, Tufts, Harvard Pilgrim, et cetera, et cetera, veterans, the Veterans Benefit, TRICARE, et cetera. That pays the 20% that, that Medicare does not cover. All right, so you go to the doctor, Medicare Part A, or Medicare covers, 80%, your supplement covers 20%, et cetera. Does anyone know what Medicare Part B pays for or why you even have it? They don't. Medicare Part A pays for hospitalization. Part B pays for adjunct rehab and equipment needs. So if you needed a prosthetic or crutches or anything, they go through your Med B. So it is important to have, I know it is expensive, it comes out of your Social Security typically, but it really is important to have because let's say you do need a nursing home down the road, 10, 20, 30 years, um, and you are done with your Medicare time. Your Medicare time in a nursing home, you get about 100 days per spell of illness. You have to have a 60-day spell of wellness in order to re-up your 100 days. But not everyone gets 100 days. You have to be very sick in order to get 100 days. So it's based on goals. So you fall and break your hip, God forbid, you get about 14 days. 
14 days is, ru is roughly what Medicare will pay for. Let's say you have to stay a little bit longer because you need the care. Med B will then come in and at a lesser rate will pay for rehab in this nursing home. So it is important that you do sign up for Med B even though it, it is a cost. And this is where Shannon helps me to say somebody is going to move into assisted living. They're going to move into assisted living and the nursing home says to them on Wednesday, you're out Friday. So Shannon will fight with the nursing homes to get them that extra time in there so we have time to find them in assisted living. So who has a managed care product in here? They've now sold their rights of Medicare to Tufts or to ARP or Aetna. It is less, it is less expensive because you don't need a supplemental insurance like a Blue Cross MedEx, but you are then, you ha there are constraints to where you can go and what doctors you can see because, because they have to be within network. So say you wanna go to, to not Newbridge, Newbridge is in debt. Dedham. Say you want to go to Dedham to Newbridge, but they don't take AARP. That, that's the sort of constraints that you would find. They also are monitored a lot closer than the feds mon monitor Medicare. So let's say you fall and break your hip. Under Medicare, I can get you a presumption of coverage for 14 days. Under the managed cares, I can't. I always recommend, if you can, to keep your Medicare benefit, even though it is more expensive upfront and the upfront costs in the back end you'll you'll have better care and you'll also have the care that you you want you can pick any doctor they typically all take medicare um and et cetera et cetera the hospital is typically fine you know um we're seeing a lot of these acos through the hospitals now like um, mass general brigham has an aco but again you have to find the in-network providers so uh, it's um accounts credit so they manage the they manage the insurance so if you go in it's it's i think it's a credit accounts organization but don't quote me thanks <laughs> i don't know i don't know the accountable care organization so basically they they manage they manage their the the people in their um insurance coverage in their network um let's see what else does anyone have questions about medicare that's okay, go. Um, I, I was going to change the subject now yeah. about long-term care. Oh, that's what I was going on to, too. Oh, okay. Great minds think alike. <laughs> and you look so familiar to me, and I'm stuck <laughs> with, I, I, I'm going to figure it out one of these times. Okay. So, Medicaid or MassHealth. So, MassHealth is also a federally funded program. Every state has it. The, the There are different guidelines per state. So, in, in the state of New York, one person is allowed to keep $30,000, okay, in their bank account. And then anything over that, they would have to pay to the nursing home. Or there's a few other things we can get, you know, we can pay down before you have to pay the nursing home, the funeral, etc. In Massachusetts, does anyone want to take a guess? Two thousand. Two thousand. Yep. I went through. Yep. Two thousand dollars. And and these and I'm talking about nursing home Medicare, Cade. So, so community Medicaid is different. It is income based. My, nursing home Medicaid is asset based, so they really don't care about how much income you make because the end result is is that anything your income goes to the nursing home as what's called patient liability. So let's say you make two thousand dollars a month. The lovely state of Massachusetts allows you to pay your coinsurance. They let you pay the one hundred and eighty seven dollars and fifty cents for Blue Cross a month, and they allow you to keep seventy two dollars and eighty cents. That is your spending money for the month. They, they ended up, they haven't changed that figure since 1992. So th there was no COVID or any, anything like that. And the rest of the money goes to the nursing home as your liability. So, and then the state pays th the balance of your bill. Yeah, the, so that's, that's for one person. If, there, if you're in a marital situation, you're a sp it's called spousal um, mass health. You're allowed to keep $140,000 in liquid assets, and you can keep the house, and you can keep a car, and you're um, and 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 then anything over and above that you have to either spend down. There's some things you can do with spouses that is a little bit easier. In the state of Massachusetts, you're able to transfer deeds between spouses um, for for no. There's no penalty for that. 
There's also a clause in MassHealth that states that if your child or sister or brother lives with you and has been your caretaker for three years, then a transfer with a doctor's letter, we're able to transfer the deed of that house to the child or brother or sister caregiver. Um, and that is, that's also allowed. So um, I just did one more recently and it went beautifully. Sometimes they don't go as easy, but this, this particular one went very smoothly. How uh, much tax does the state take from each bed in a nursing home? So there's a, there is a user fee that the state, it's about, tw it's twenty eight fifty a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a day. It's a user fee, yep. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should I keep going? Yeah. Do you got, are you scared? Yeah. Okay. I'll try. I'm just looking to see. Now. Who has an irrevocable trust in here? That's the only kind of trust that MassHealth allows, and it has to be done within five years. There used to be another trust that I could do, myself actually, as a social worker, believe it or not. It was called a pool disability trust. I would certify that the person was disabled, and they were able to put the money into a trust Within, the fi within five years, so there was not a five-year look back on this particular kind of trust. The state of Massachusetts has recently done away with that. So now, unfortunately, or fortunately for Bill, what my plans for people would look like would be slow the burn rate down of your money. Go to an assisted living first. Slow it down and then move when, when you have you know, less assets because you'll, you'll have your own room, own apartment. You'll, there's more activities. You know, uh, it, I mean, for the most part. I mean, there are some nice nursing homes. I hate to really be tough on them all. And, and some people don't have a choice either. So, you know, so nursing, uh, assisted livings in the state of Massachusetts, you have to be able to manage your own diabetes. They cannot give I I injections. They don't do wound care. So there feeding are, tubes. they can't do feeding tubes, any yeah, tubes, sure. really any tubes, yeah. yeah. So they really are a social model versus a medical model. And that's really what the nursing home is for. Um, the days of private rooms have gone, unfortunately, um, because they're used for quarantines. There are a lot of what we call MDROs, bugs, viruses, that, that, ha that need a private room. And, they, and because the buildings were built so long ago, there aren't a lot of private rooms. So those are really held for people that can't be cohorted in a normal population. What else? tricks of the trade. The state of Massachusetts for mass health in a nursing home allows that you pay your prepay your burial. They do not want to be responsible for that. Under the Massachusetts re mass health regulations, they will give you up to $2,500 for cremation. The veterans benefit gives you a thousand. Um, and that doesn't have anything to do with service chart. If you, just because you served, you get the benefit. You don't have to be in for a, no, you don't have to be in a war. You just, <laughs> or, I mean, you wouldn't know because you'd be gone, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> it would just be your kids, right? Um, I know, out to see you go. I mean, that would be how, I'm just trying to look to see. Who notifies Social Security when you die to stop the check? Um, the hospital does? No, the undertaker. Oh, the undertaker. Oh, I don't know. I normally, so, so I've done a, a lot of mass health applications, and when people pass away, I do get a letter from mass health saying, you're no longer eligible for mass health, and it gives you a code, and then it says, because you're deceased. And I'm, okay. <laughs> so they do, they do figure it out somehow. Um, Why don't you talk about um, paying privately for a couple months? That yeah. Yeah, so, well, more recently, it's been harder to find long-term care beds. I, someone would call me and they would say, listen, I have $17,000. I was like, I'd be like, great, that's perfect. We have one month private pay. I can get you in to basically any nursing home you want. And then I'll file for Mass Health. So you go in on May 1st, you pay the 15,000 bucks it is. June 1st, I file your Mass Health application and it's all set. Mass Health is an arduous process. Unfortunately, I received a memo from Mass Health the other day that I used to tell people easily four to six months to have that application go through. They are telling me to tell people the state of Massachusetts, Mass Health, eight to ten months for that to go through. So you can imagine that these nursing homes are are 
very scared to take these people that may not have a payer source for the next 10 months because that's how it works. If I file for you on May 1st, 10 months from May 1st is, no, March, March. They, they may get paid on Mar in March all the way back to May. So what happens when someone passes away is that there really is nobody that owns that application. I try like heck to finish them, but sometimes it doesn't always work. The state of Massachusetts requires a personal representation, which is a probate assignable um, represent, rep representative. So what happens is, is they have to go to court. Well, if you're not, if you have nothing, why would you go to court? <laughs> so unfortunately, a lot of these applications kind of die with the person. Um, yes. I have a question about the, uh, what, uh, the insurance. Mm -hmm. Mass Health. Yeah. And that person dies. They have to pay that money back, right? No. Well, no. Say, no. God forbid, I end up in the nursing home. And then, I'm on Mass Health. yeah. I don't have to pay that. My daughter doesn't have to. Pay no. That. Mm -mm. No. If you left your house. You know, to your daughter five years back. As long as you, is, five. yeah, as you long as the house, yeah. yeah. If you left it to five her five in years. A, irre, in an irrevocable trust. It has to be in an irrevocable trust. Well, if it's in an irrevocable trust, what's wrong? The state of Massachusetts doesn't recognize it, and it's free game. Sure. She asked, I, she asked, does the money that the state pays have to be paid back and the answer is no it doesn't have to be paid back your debt is your debt and that it it goes with you and then the next question was um if your house is in is, what if your house is in a revocable revocable it's fair game the the way the way that mass health looks at a revocable trust is that typically a revocable trust the owner of the house is the beneficiary of the trust and that's not what they, it has to be in an irre, irrevocable trust so that it can't be sold while the mass health process is going on. But if the trust is in your daughter's name, it's not my trust. It's it can't be revocable. It has to be irrevocable. But when you're younger, it's good to have a revocable trust because I hear suicidal thoughts up here. There's some suicidal stuff going on. Okay, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, personally, I have Medicare yeah. A, B, and D. Perfect. I got an irrevocable trust. I've got AIRP. Yep. But what I see all the time now is you've got to have Part C. What is Part C? I don't. I don't know. Part C. Oh, it combines. Part C is when it combines. Medicare A and Medicare B. So that has to do with a that has to do with an advantage plan. So you're all set as long as you have a secondary insurance, like I talked about. You do yeah. ARP maybe is your secondary. So you have Medicare Prime, ARP secondary, B and D. You're all set. Yeah. Medex, Med perfect. You have I, I mean you have more insurance than I even know what to do with. <laughs> you probably pay for it too. I mean, you know it is you pay for it, right? It insures you. I am. Okay. What else? What other questions? Can you be overinsured? I mean, I mean, sort of. I, I guess sometimes it gets a little confusing and, and it might get kicked out because no one knows who's going to pay first and everyone fights. Like, no, the insurance companies do not want to pay. So a lot of times, actually, I just worked with a family recently. The patient was on a vent, a ventilator. So the, he was very sick. He had Blue Cross Federal, so he's clearly a federal employee. Blue Cross Federal only pays 70% of your inpatient rehab stay. So for a vent, that's a th it's $1,000 a day. So he had 30, and they wouldn't do a single case agreement, which is how these nursing homes get paid the vent rate. So finally, they decided they were just going to deny the claim altogether. They denied, and this poor guy has to pay $1,000 a day for a ventilator unit. It was twenty nine thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars that the the check got they got handed over, and he's not married. He owns a house. I mean, it, and he's young. So that a lot of these ventilator patients, unfortunately, are not older. They are young. So a lot of the things we see, like the Medicare, where you get a full hundred days because you're very sick, they don't because they have commercial insurance. So and commercial insurance is very quick to say you're a custodial person. 
I'm very excited about this. I couldn't be more excited at 45 years. I'm, I'm only 44, but I'm going to be 45. <laughs> at 45 years old, I rolled out an elder care hotline number. I put the cards over there. So it's free advice. So if you call, um, my assistant and I pick up the calls, and within 72 hours, we'll try to answer your question or get you to someone that can. Um, so that's my give back to the community. I've been doing this for a very long time. Every my, – my brother's family calls me. My, mother, my mother's friends ask me about, you know, what happens if this happens? What's the best rehab in this area to go to? You know, all these things. So I decided that I've, I've now started this um, 1-800 number in the hope that I can reach out to a lot of people and at least get you to the right agency if, that, if that's what the – so I'm very excited about that at 45. What, and dishwashers. I'm so excited about new dishwashers. Okay. I run every day. I do. Oh. Oh, I run mine every day, too. I have four kids. It's, it's a lot. I'm so happy to be here and not with my kids, okay? No. All right, what else? What else? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's long-term care insurance. Yeah. yeah. And then one goes for like, I don't know, we'll say three months. Three, and yeah. The next one doesn't start for 90 days after that. Yeah. It goes for three months or whatever. Um, are these company, are these insurance companies paying? Yeah. They are, they are, they, fight you over they, they, they do will. fight you and they fight you to get on. <laughs> so, yeah. So I will tell you a lot of times, a, a lot of times I'm hired just to get the policies to pay in the beginning, you know, because as soon as you, as soon as you think you need the policy, you need to open a claim because there is a waiting period, 90 to 120 days that you pay out of pocket for. And then they will pay you. They don't pay the nursing home directly or the home care agency directly. They pay the person. So that's always a misnomer. Like the, they're like, well, aren't you billing my insurance? You know, I, I'm sure Justin can speak to this. Why isn't my long-term care insurance just paying for it? And I'm like, that's not the way it works. They pay you and then you pay them. So you better be in good enough shape to be able to handle Right, your right. Insurance. Yep. Or call the 1-800 number. I'll and help you. The yeah. Too. Yeah. They pay you. Right, right, yeah. They don't, they won't, the, and they'll help you. The assisted living will help you get the documentation that you need because you need care plans and bills and things like that. Daily notes sometimes that if you're at home, they want. But the agencies typically will help with that. They'll send them in once a week or twice or, you know, a couple times a month or however, long, however often they want them. And then that's how it gets paid. The long-term care insurance is, use it in assisted living though because the long-term care insurances with mass health are difficult. Because if you are bouncing on and off Mass Health, it's it it it's confusing for the state of Massachusetts. Like they they do everything in paper, so nothing's fast, right? So you know you use your long-term care insurance, and then you bounce off of it, and then you bounce back onto it, and it becomes very confusing for the state of Massachusetts and the nursing home, I'm sure. And so. assisted livings love it. Yeah, okay. and so assisted livings do love it because it basically pays your whole rent almost. It depends on the policy. Right. Typically, they're years, though, in yeah, years. Years. years, like three years, five years. I've seen seven years. Um, I have a gentleman now that I case manage out in the community. I'm going to see him next. He and his wife both have policies, and they both are getting care. So they're actually making money on the home care agency because they, you know, it's they, their policies pay for more than what the daily rate is for the aid. Right, because I had a woman from, um, she lived in Newton, but then she moved to Needham. And her policy was paying for three years, will pay 13000 a month. Yeah, so she's making money. And she had a uh, really bad situation. She moved from Newton five years ago, sold her big house, put an addition on her daughter's house. Last summer, the daughter tried to evict her. Um, yeah, she went in court. Yes, yeah, she went in court, and then the daughter ended up dying. So then the son-in-law sold the house to get rid of her. And so she is at a community, but the hard part was her. She had no money, so she had to wait the three months for the policy to kick in. So I think her ex-husband gave her the money. And they're so expensive, those policies. But that's, why, that's kind of why you hire someone like Bill or myself, because we are able, even though we're able to negotiate down some of the rates in assisted living. No one ever knows that. They're like, how can, how, not in nursing homes. They can't. What's good for you has to be good for you. So that the... the the rates in nursing homes are pretty standard 
350 550 a day whatever but in in assisted livings like bill can get rid of community fees he can he can get the rent the rents down typically the care is not non-negotiable but the rest of it you know he can really negotiate some of those things so that's why you get involved with you know someone like bill plus he's a good guy no, the community things are just made up they really are. some assisted livings they're private all of them but um, some of them are supposed to have so many rooms. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're right. Some of them in this area. So, some. So, yeah, they have some room. So some of them have tax credit programs, which are subsidized. Um, one, one of those is Traditions of Dedham, and they take someone from outside the community and, and then inside and then outside and then inside. And I, actually, I had a family member. I, my husband's family, um, husband and wife, lived there. And they, ha they, they had a great time. It, it worked out well for them financially, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but they did have some money to move in because they had to pay a few months in, in order to get on to the program. There are two types of mass health programs in assisted living. One is called PACE mm -hmm. and one is called GAFC, G -A we, I, F -C, Group Adult Foster Care, I think it stands for. But the, the income requirements are so low, it is so hard to get people in. GAFC is 1300 a month. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's that's a standard that's standard mass health right. regulation. So if you were like I'm going to apply for mass health in the community, the rate the sorry, I looked these up because I just wanted mm -hmm. um if you're if you're looking for community Medicaid, um a per, the person apply applying has to have has to be roughly below $19,392 for one person. And I think for 262 26 to 28 for a couple in the community though so like i said in nursing homes they don't care they don't care you can you just can't make nine nine thousand dollars a month because it's called an over under but other than that if you make less than that you're good so any other questions i've scared these people so much they're leaving <laughs> They're moving, oh. they're moving to New York where they can keep $30,000. All right. All of our information is on the table. Please, 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 you know, take some. If you have questions, Bill and I will hang out for a little while and because I'm not going home. No. Um, the kids are still in school. And I, you know, please let us know if there's anything else we can do. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.